Okay, in today's demonstration, we're going to cover uh, the CAD and CAM of the Red River College uh, Stirling Engine flywheel. So what's required is that you have Autodesk Fusion 360 installed on your computer. Um, you may want to go ahead and install uh, Microsoft's uh, Visual Studio Code. Although you'll be down, you know, you'll be prompted to download this um, at some point in the video series, and uh, you'll need access to the Learn site. Okay, so what we're going to cover in video one is downloading the RRC flywheel uh, for Fusion 360. Um, we're going to go over using Fusion 360 to design the the flywheel. And um, I'm going to go over some important design features um, within the, uh, the design of the flywheel. Okay, and then in video two, uh, we'll go over the computer-aided manufacturing uh, in the Fusion 360 environment. And then finally, um, generating uh, an NC file or G code for the CNC mill. Okay, and so just to have a picture of what we're going to do is um, we're going to design a pattern in the flywheel that will be uh, cut out by a CNC mill. So here's a simulation of this pattern here. Okay, so. Let's get into it. I'll head over to the Learn site, and um, you'll go to, once you're in uh, Basics of Manufacturing, you go to Course Content and then Content. Then under Module 2, Sterling Engine Model Factory, and Station 5, flywheel, CNC programming, and milling. There will be a file called RRC Flywheel V1. So download this file and remember where you download it. Okay, so I'm going to download it in my just my downloads folder. You can see I've already have it downloaded. Um, so I'm just going to replace this file. You won't get this message unless you downloaded it before. Okay, so now that we have it downloaded, I'm going to go to Fusion 360. And once you have it open, you'll click File and then Open. A window is going to pop up and you're going to select Open from My Computer. Now it's already taking me to the downloads folder, but uh, you'll likely have to navigate to the folder where you save this file. So I'll click on the file that I want to open and then press open. Okay, so you can see there is already a flywheel modeled. Uh, you don't have to remodel it or anything. It's to the correct size and everything like that. So and it's in the correct orientation to the CNC mill as well, where the z-axis is this blue line here in the upwards and downwards position. And then the flywheel is modeled on the x and y plane. OK, so before we start uh, you know, drawing our pattern in here, I just want to make sure that the um, you know, the file is in the correct settings. So um, if you click document settings, this little arrow right here, you want to make sure that the units are in, in inches. If they are in millimeters, uh, you will have to change it to inches, okay? And then the second thing is you'll have to uh, just inspect the outer diameter. So I'll click uh, the outer diameter here highlights blue. And then in this measure, 
uh, window here, it says the diameter is 5.5 inches. Okay, so if you get something other than that, you're going to have to um, uh, you know, first make sure that the document is in inches and then make sure that you get the diameter to 5.5 inches. And you can do that by going to this modify button here and selecting scale. And once you're in the scale uh, window here, uh, you can either click on the object or you can click on the uh, extrude button down here uh, in, the, in the modeling history. So there's two methods to, to do it. You just want to make sure that the object turns blue, though. And then you can put in the scaling factor. Um, I can't tell you what that will be, um, but you just need to make sure that when you are completing this, when you've completed the scale factor, that the outer diameter is 5.5 inches in, in diameter. Okay, so if it already is in inches and the diameter is 5.5 inches, you do not need to do any of the scaling. Um, you're good to go. Okay, so um, now you may notice that there are some lines, some dashed lines in here. So there's one that goes all the way around, there's one around each hole, and then there's one that's you know, uh, encompassing these four holes. So these are high risk zones where uh, you're at risk of damaging the, the tool, the end mill that we will use to cut out uh, the design, the, the fixture, uh, the part, or the, or the CNC machine itself. Um, so I want you to make sure that uh, your design does not go into these high risk zones, okay? And then outside of this line here. So nothing outside here and nothing within uh, these, these areas here. Okay, so that's a parameter, that's a parameter that you, you must follow. Okay, so to make a pattern, I first need to make a sketch. So I'll click this uh, sketch button here, this create sketch, and then I'm going to select the top surface of the plate. So just make sure that your Z um, axis is pointing upwards, and then you click the top surface here. Okay, so I don't really like working on an angle. I like looking at it from a top-down view. So I'm going to click the front face here on this cube. That's going to orient my, my flywheel in the right direction. But notice that the Y is pointing downward and the X is pointing to the, to the left. Um, you can click these arrows that appear when you hover over the, the cube um, to get the Y axis facing upwards and the X axis facing or going towards the, to the right. Okay, so now we are truly looking at this uh, uh, you know, in the orientation that uh, it makes sense. Okay, so you can use these functions here to make your design. Um, I'm going to show you a pattern design, which you know takes a shape and then it patterns it all around. Uh, so that I don't have to draw multiple shapes and possibly make mistakes along the way. So it's very easy um, to do. Um, so uh, I'll show that to you in this example. But, you know, I've seen everything from the Dodge Ram symbol to circles to triangles to lettering, uh, you name it. Um, so, uh, you know, Choose your inspiration. That's all. That uh, that is that is up to you. I'm just showing you an example here. Okay, so I want to have you know kind of somewhat of a spoke design. So I want to have a spoke in between each circle. So I'll just show you how 
I do that. So a spoke leading from uh, each um, hole around the, uh, the flywheel. So I'll click the circle button here and I'm going to bring it out and in this case I'm just going to make it tangent to um, this circle here. So if I just click on that circle it should make it tangent. Um, it looks like it did not and I can tell because the line is still blue. It should turn black when it's fully constrained. So I'll click this tangent button here and then I'll click this circle and this circle. And now you can see that this line has turned black and it is fully constrained. Okay, um, I want to make an inner circle that is the same diameter as this diameter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drag it out a little bit past the, uh, the dashed line here and I'm going to Click on this circle that I just created and then click on the dashed line circle. And so you can see that that one's now turned black. So that's for fully constrained. And if you're curious to what these dimensions are, you can click the uh, sketch dimension and click on the diameter. And this one appears to be 4.5. It says, I get a message here though. It says, adding this dimension will over constrain the sketch. Choose OK to create a driven dimension. So, sure. OK, so it's in brackets, and you'll see that this dimension right here is not dictating the diameter of this circle. It is just a result of this circle being tangent to this circle right here. That's probably going to happen when I click this one, too. Yeah, so I get the same message here. And uh, it tells me that this circle is one and a half. So that's a result of this circle being tangent to the, uh, to the dashed circle, which is fine. Okay, so to make a spoke around, uh, you know, leading up to each hole, uh, I actually just need to make a pocket, um, you know, just, uh, in between these two circles. And you'll see once I once I pattern it how that works. Okay, so I'm going to draw a uh, a line from the center to this circle, and then you can see it's I still have a line here. Um, so if I press escape, it quits that line function, and then I'm going to draw another line from the center of the, the flywheel to this circle here. Okay. Now, if I was just to, you know, pattern this shape right here, it would actually just, you know, if I patterned it 12 times around, it would actually just uh, you know, cut an entire circle out because this line would be touching the next line. Okay, so I need to offset this, and to offset this, I'm going to actually make these two lines construction lines. So I'll click that line, and I'll, I'll press Shift, and then I'll select that line, and that allows me to select both lines. And then over in the Sketch Palette window, I'm going to press Construction for line type. And you can see they turn into dash lines. So these lines right here, just become, uh, uh, you know, reference lines or lines that you could dimension off of. Okay. So now I want to actually create lines that will make the pocket. Okay, so I'll click line again, and I'm just going to draw a line from this circle here to this circle, and then I'll draw a line from this circle here to this circle. Okay, so I have two lines that are just kind of haphazardly placed in here. Uh, they're not, you can see they're blue, so that means they're not constrained. So I want to make these two lines parallel with my dashed lines. 
So I'll click the parallel constraint up here. And I'll click this blue line, and then I'll click this dashed line. That one is going to be parallel with that line. And I want to make this line parallel with this line. Okay, so that one's parallel as well. However, you may notice that they're still blue. And that's because we haven't put an offset on these yet. So I'm going to offset this one. Oh, that's not quite correct. I'll delete that dimension by selecting it. And I'm going to select that one again, and then I'm going to make sure that I click that blue line. Okay, so it's giving me an offset of 0.13587, kind of a random number. Um, but you see that that line has now turned black, which means it's fully constrained. Um, but I don't like this dimension, and so I'm going to put uh, the half a spoke length to be, uh, or half a spoke width to be 0 0.05. Okay, so when I pattern this all around, this, this little pie here, 12 times around, um, the spoke is going to be double this offset. So it's going to be double 0 0.05, which would be 0 0.1. So each spoke is going to be 0 0.1 inches in width. Okay, and then I'll dimension this one to this line as well, and I'll make that 0 0.05 as well. Okay, so now I have this clear uh, pocket that I want, but you'll see I have all of these extra lines in here. So I'm going to use this trim function. So it looks like a little scissors. And I'm going to trim away this and trim away this. And then I'm just going to get rid of this line right there and this little line right there and this line here and here. So I'm just left with this shape here. And you can see that it's still kept, you know, the tangent to this circle function. It's still tangent to this circle. Um, I have my offsets in there. I still have my parallel lines in there. So it did not delete any of those uh, constraints when I trimmed those lines, which is nice. Okay, so I have the shape that I want. Now it's time to finish the sketch. So I'll press finish sketch. And I need to cut a, this hole out into the material. And you do that by choosing the extrude function. And instead of making a new body or joining a new extrusion or making a solid out of this, I want to make a cut out of it. Okay, so the operation type is going to be a cut. And then I need to select what I'm cutting. Okay, so. There we go. You can see that it's kind of light gray and uh, a pretty definite black outline of the cut. And so I know I've selected the right object. Okay, I, 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 I can't really cut upwards. I'm getting this error down here. So I'm going to actually reverse the arrow by dragging it downwards. You can see I can cut any length that I want just by dragging it. You know, which is fine, just drag it past the material. But if I want to do it kind of clean, um, I can just do this. I can change the extent, extent type to all. So that'll just cut through anything, any solid material uh, that the cut, that this profile encounters. So once I'm happy with my cut, I'll press OK. And you can see that I have pocket in here. There is, however, an issue with this pocket. And if we use a, an end mill on a CNC mill to cut this profile out, uh, it will never be able to do this because you can see this, cut, this, uh, this shape here has sharp edges. So uh, an end mill is, has a diameter, which means that 
uh, it will put a radius on each internal feature. Okay, so let's put, uh, let's use the fillet function to, to make these sharp corners here um, uh, round. So I'll choose the fillet function right here, and this window pops up. And once I have this window popped up, I can select the, the features that I want to fill in. So I want to select this line right here, that line. So each internal corner I want to select. Okay, and so there are four of them for this shape. All right, so um, you may be wondering what size do I make the radius? So we're going to be using a 1 8 cutter, which is 0.125 inches in diameter. Um, but this, of course, is going to be a radius. So I can type in 0.125 divided by 2. And you can see that it'll actually just calculate that for me and this becomes a 0.625 inch radius. I press OK and it's done the fillet function. Okay so uh, if I just want to prove to you what that radius is I can click on that radius and it says uh, radius 0 0.0625 inches and the diameter is 0.125. So uh, I, I'm quite happy with that. Okay, so finally, um, we're getting to the patterning section of this uh, of this design. So um, you can see there's a rectangular pattern here in this create area of of the ribbon bar, and uh, that's not really what I want. So I want to get a circular pattern, and that's if you click this create word, um, you can go down to pattern, and there's three different pattern types. So there's rectangular, there's circular, and there's a pattern along a path. And I'm going to use the circular pattern function. Okay, so in this circular pattern window that pops up, it needs, it is prompting me to uh, select an object. And I found in Fusion 360, it's, it's kind of hard to select. See, I'm selecting a line or something like that. I'm not really, it's, it's kind of challenging to select this pocket. So what I can do is go into the, um, into the, into the modeling history and select the extrude, which it selects, you know, that extrude with the square or, or with the corners. And then I can also select the fillet function. So that selects not only the pocket that we modeled, but the, um, but the fillets that we put on it afterwards. So we need to make sure we select both of those. OK, and then it's not really prompting me to go on. It's still prompting me to select objects, but I'm happy with the object that I've selected. Um, now it's time to select the axis that I want this to be cut around. And I want it to revolve around the Z axis. So beside axis, I'll click select, and then I want to choose this blue axis, which is the Z axis. So once I've done that, it's kind of showing me kind of a ghost line of where these will end up. So this is kind of cool because um, you know, you can kind of design on the fly pretty easily. So this is what, uh, well, I guess it disappears from that view, but this is what three will look like. And I guess I can select four here, uh, or I could go over here to quantity. So that's what four looks like, and five, and six, and seven, and eight, and so on and so forth. But I really wanted to really match up the spoke with the with the holes. I want twelve. Okay, 
So once I've selected however many I want, um, you can see what happens if I select 13, is that it's starting to you know, make those spokes really thin. And if I go 14, now they're overlapping. So the software uh, will allow you to do this, although that's somewhat of a, you know, not such a good design because you've actually now cut away this ring from this ring. So 14 is too many, 12 appears to be just right. So I'll select 12 and then press OK. OK, and so it's done. You can see these spokes are lining up with each uh, hole. This is what I wanted. You can choose whatever you want. You do not need to pattern um, or, or anything like that. You can model the, you can sketch your whole design if you wish. Uh, the patterning just makes something that's repetitive, like this shape right here, uh, pretty easy to copy around an axis. So, um, just to reiterate uh, the important parts uh, or parameters of this of this design is that these pockets are within the modeling the safe modeling area, so it's outside of the high risk zones, which is which are uh, you know around each one of these holes. Beyond this, uh, beyond this uh, dashed line, so this is risky area out here. This is safe. Um, and then within this circle encompassing these four holes, this is also a high risk zone. So uh, we'll keep it out of here as well. All right. So um, that is, those are the, the high risk zones. And then the other parameter is that we are going to be making a full depth cut, so the depth goes all the way through the flywheel. And also, we need to make sure that the, uh, the radius is at least 0 .0 0 0.0625 inches, and that the pocket is you know, wider than the cutter diameter, which is 0.125. So at no point does this cut become less than, than uh, 0.125. So you know, this distance from here to here is greater than the diameter of the cutter. This distance from you know, over here is greater than the diameter of the cutter. So those are the important parameters of this flywheel shape and design. And I hope this helps uh, you uh, in your design. Um, so in the next video, we are going to go over the computer-aided manufacturing model within, or module uh, within Fusion 360 and generating uh, an NC file for the CNC mill.